we'll just play it instrumentally. This is my background story I always give because people ask me, what led you to pull for the sports teams you pull for? Well, you can blame my wife <laughs> because what happened was when I knew I was settled here, I said to her, I'd be nice to have local sports to be a fan of. And she said, well, I used to work in Boston. I used to live in Boston. I've always kind of pulled for Boston, all their teams, so Celtics, Patriots, Bruins, uh, which one am I missing? And Red Sox, if you're talking about just the major sports. And I said, well, I don't really care about hockey that much, but the other three, yes. So, New England Patriots, I kind of got into, and a lot of people, of course, said, well, you kind of, that's, isn't that kind of like bandwagon? Because right around the time I moved to Connecticut is around the time they got good. 
But no, in this case, it was just I wanted to have a local team, and that was her. She already had kind of pulled for Boston before she even knew me. And she grew up in Connecticut. I mean, in New Jersey, but then she went to um, college in Connecticut. And then after college, worked in Boston, then came back to New Haven for nursing school, and that's when we met in New Haven, when she was in nursing school and I was in divinity school. And so when our kids were born, I'm going to talk the whole hour about this. <laughs> no. When our kids were born, I said, you know, be nice for them, too, to have local. So it's been all Boston, and where am I going with this? Oh, I wasn't talking about football that much this football season because, of course, Patriots weren't that good. So now that they're not as good, I mean, they made playoffs, which is good, but they're not as good as they usually are. It doesn't come up as much in church, but in years past, I always talked about it. And what I will say about it is uh, today's the semifinals in the NFL, and then two weeks from today is the finals. Uh, two weeks from today, when they have the finals, I want to put in a little plug. Our, our brothers and sisters down the street here, St. Paul Lutheran Church, is doing a grinder fundraiser for Super Bowl Sunday. So we have tickets for them in our office, trying to be good neighbors here and support each other. So if you're interested in getting a grinder from St. Paul Lutheran for Super Bowl Sunday, I think they have a window of time you can pick it up probably right after church if you go over and pick it up. And I want to say it's $10, if I'm remembering right. And so, yeah, the one that's up on the hill kind of. Yeah. You have to pull, you have to pull by the gas station and, and then work your way back to get to their parking lot. That's Holy Trinity, I think you're talking about. On Maple. And what's interesting is years ago, our church used to do grinders. We did it for both Super Bowl and for um, the NCAA basketball tournament, March Madness. We did it for both for, for many years. And then it kind of, you know, some things come and go. And, but this year, they told us they're doing it, so we said, let's support them. So anyway, we are going to not use today's bulletin so that we can save it for next week and save on paper. So the one thing I am going to use from the bulletin is today's scripture because I want to stay on the same scripture, but the songs and everything else we're going to change, then that way next week we can use the same bulletin and I'll just, I'll just change the scripture for next week. So we're going to start out with this song that we were just playing instrumentally called This Is Amazing Grace. Welcome everyone, by the way, Terryville Congregational Church. I'm going to try to move it along. I said this last time we were virtual too, because I know when you're staring at a screen, it's not good to just be lingering. So we'll try to move this along and um, I don't know if it'll end up going the full hour or not, but we'll keep it moving here. We'll have a lot of good music today, well, hopefully good music, and I'll tell you what they are if you want to look them up at home and sing with us. This one's called This Is Amazing Grace, different than Amazing Grace, but we are going to sing that one later in the service too. This one's called This Is Amazing Grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Who shakes the whole 
got any viewers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will always make this disclaimer. <laughs> a lot of people watch it not necessarily only just live, but at, at various times. So even if you are watching it live and you might see that, oh, there's only like five people watching it live, usually we do end up getting a total of uh, anywhere from 150 to 300 views with almost all of our videos, and that makes me very thankful. So, welcome to Terryville Congregational Church. Good morning, everyone. Be safe today. It wasn't the most snow we've ever gotten, but the fact that it went all day Saturday and didn't finish till the evening, and now people are needing to, to clean up this morning. So our parking lot's not great, so this was probably the best call for us to uh, be virtual this morning. We'll go into some announcements here. I don't want to do too much talking because, like I said, I know it, it gets old when you're looking at it on the screen. But I, there's a couple announcements that I do want to point out. Next Sunday, a week from today, this is for your family too, we are going to go sledding at Ray and Jeannie Zalaski's house. Now, that's the same place where we had our rally day, picnic, so most people will know where it's located, but we'll have the address in the bulletin and everything. It's not far from the church. And they are so gracious to host us. They're going to serve a little lunch, maybe like a soup or something. But they are inviting anybody that would like to bring something to share, a dish or a dessert or whatever, you're welcome to. But you don't have to. You're welcome to just come as you are. And if you don't sled or you don't want to sled, that's okay too because this is a, an overall fellowship event. So they're really encouraging all of us to come, even if you're not planning to sled, because you can hang out in their house. They'll have, you know, the heat on. <laughs> and then outside, they're going to do a bonfire. So if you want to hang out outside, you can hang out outside. Now, I know we are supposed to get some rain later this week. Hopefully it doesn't wash all the snow away. I don't think it will, just in one day. Hopefully we'll still have a good covering. And uh, I want you to come, too, and help, help us with the... Yep. All the shenanigans. <laughs> it was so much fun last year. We did it last year, too. So that's a week from today, right after church. We will have coffee hour, but then basically straight from coffee hour, you can go over to their house and we'll have a good time together. I think most of the other announcements are things that are happening later down the road, so it's nothing I need to spend a lot of time talking about today. You can see the announcements uh, you know, when you're here next Sunday, but we have a lot coming up in March. February was kind of a, we're not sure, with COVID numbers, so we didn't plan a ton of stuff in the month of February. But one thing we do have in February, like I said, next Sunday, the sledding and luncheon. But then the third Sunday in February is our congregation annual meeting. So that is one thing we have. And then most of our other things happen in March. So Alex's 16th birthday on Tuesday. Nice. Happy birthday. And anybody that wants to put your announcements into the comments, you can, or your prayer requests or your celebrations. You guys have any special plans for the 16th birthday? Oh, surprise. <laughs> I'm thinking of skiing. Oh, I think I know part of the surprise. Yeah. I know part of it. Uh, but yeah, but I'm not gonna not gonna say anything. But happy birthday. And if anybody has any prayer requests, I do know that the loud family from our congregation. Uh, Sam and Jeff Loud, Jeff's mother passed away this week, so we could keep them in our prayers. I think she was from Manchester. So keep the Loud family, L-O-W-D, Loud, in your prayers. Of course, we've already been praying, and we'll continue to pray for Iris's family, passing of Iris Soto. And other prayer requests on our, in our bulletin here. Kozakowski family, Karen Riley, uh, Sue Delane, and then there's a lot of others on here too. We'll keep everybody in our prayers, everybody that's in nursing facilities as well. Yep. Uh, prayers for the United States. Oh. Where do they live? Oh, boy. Okay. What's her name? Jen. Jen? Uh, Jessica. Jessica, okay for Jessica's family and friends. Okay, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Keep everybody safe today. We thank you that even in the midst of a snowstorm or the aftermath of a snowstorm, we can still worship. We have the use of this technology so that we can have a live stream. And we have four of us here in person and hopefully many online. We bring our hearts together and our spirits together. We bow before you. We say thank you for loving us for giving us all the gifts you give us. 
Be with us today as we worship you and throughout this week and bring us all safely back here together next Sunday as we continue in the Epiphany season. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing How Great Thou Art. So a lot of people, we tried to pick some songs today since we're virtual that you would either know by heart or at least can hum along or you can quickly Google it.
If you're a student and you're joining us, or if you're a, a parent of a student, I did want to mention that our Sunday school emailed out a little Sunday school lesson for today. So even though we didn't have in-person church, you can do your little Sunday school lesson that got emailed out at home, which was, if I'm not mistaken, to study John 3.16, which is one of the classic scriptures of our faith, and then to do the little worksheet that's with it. So that's a nice thing to do at home if you're wondering uh, what to do with for a student this morning. What I'm going to do is keep moving us along here by going right into our scripture. Like I said, I'm, that'll be the one thing I change in the bulletin for next week, but otherwise we can reuse the bulletin and not have to waste paper. So we are looking at Luke chapter 4. Now let me give you the little background and context here. So last week we read the first half of this passage that we're going to read today. The scene is this. Jesus has been in the wilderness for 40 days fasting and being tempted by Satan. He makes it out of that experience, having withstood those temptations, and basically his public ministry is now beginning. And again, this is what Epiphany is all about. It's about the identity of Jesus, and it's about some of the beginning moments in his ministry that confirm and affirm his identity. So he's, he's been in the wilderness 40 days, he's out of that experience now, and we're told the Spirit is with him, the Spirit is upon him, his, his public ministry is going to be beginning. He goes around to different synagogues, and he starts doing some teaching and preaching. And then what happens is he comes into his own hometown. Now, last week we read the first part, and that is where he stands up in the synagogue and he reads from Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed go free. And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That was the passage he read. And then he followed it up with, today this has been fulfilled. In other words, he is this good news. And it says that the people are, are amazed and they're really, you know, taken with him. Then, quickly they turn. Because now we read what happens next. From Luke chapter 4. All spoke well of him and were amazed at his gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over the land, Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all the synagogue were filled with rage, and they got up and they drove him out of town, led him to the brow of the hill over where their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them, and went on his way. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. You are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So you see how quickly they turn. The people were all excited about Jesus and they were listening to him and everything. And then... Those questions start creeping up. Wait a second. We know who this guy is. This is Joseph's son. He's like a, a simple carpenter. Why is he in here all of a sudden proclaiming all these things like he, he knows what he's talking about? And, and even if he is what he says he is, why doesn't he show us? You know, do, do some of these things we've heard you can do. And so there's a very quick shift there. Now, I want to back up for a second and just remind us, Epiphany, again, is all about the identity of Jesus Christ. So, I put in our bulletin every week the reminders of where we've covered so far in his identity. It starts, of course, the season of Epiphany with the day of Epiphany, January 6th. And then you have the entire season till we get to Ash Wednesday, which this year is March 2nd. 
So you cover the day of Epiphany, the wise men coming and bowing and worshiping the baby Jesus. Then you jump ahead to when Jesus is 30 years old and you have his baptism. Then his ministry begins. So we get his first miracle, which happened at the wedding, where he turns the water into wine and shows us the abundance of God's love. Then his first message, one of his first messages, at least his first message in his hometown, which was last week. And now this week, which I call his first persecution. In other words, he starts to realize as his ministry begins that there's going to be a lot of people that love him and accept him and seek him. But there's also going to be people that question him and people that want to persecute him and people that are not happy with him claiming to be who he's claiming to be. And so he starts to run into this. The good news, of course, that we know is his ministry is able to continue even in the midst of what happens in today's scenario because we're told at the end he was able to pass right through them and continue his ministry. And so there's a lot of layers in here. One of those layers is what I just mentioned. Sometimes you might get rejected, but to know to keep, keep moving, keep going in, in your mission. And Jesus kind of shows that here. But also, as I was thinking about this this past week, I want to invite you to focus in on this. Think about the approach of these people, how they, what they did versus what they could have done, and then how that might be in our lives too. So they come into this, if you think about it, with kind of a, an entitlement. Uh, they come to this with some, a lot of assumptions. I think they come with it, to this with a little bit of arrogance. And with some, like, demands, right? Once they start listening to Jesus and then they, wait a second. This is Joseph's son on one hand, but on the other hand, we know, we've heard he can do some powerful things. Then immediately they go into that, well, do you need to do this stuff for us. How come you don't do the miracles here? And Jesus knows they're going to do this. That's why he says in the lesson, no doubt you're going to quote to me, doctor, heal yourself. He knows where they're going. He knows they're going to start asking him. Almost like uh, demanding that he sort of put on a show. Like, hey, you're Mr. Miracle Worker. Let's see these miracles. Now, imagine that approach versus if they had come into this with openness, uh, maybe a sense of warmth and love and caring. Like, yes, we do know this is Joseph's son, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't have something wonderful to offer. Let's be open to what maybe he does have to offer. And then uh, approaching it with like a curiosity, sense of curiosity, like let's see, let's let's be open and see, and approaching with the sense of seeking, seeking him, seeking what he has to offer, and having hope about what he has to offer. Instead of saying, uh, you know, do these deeds, do these miracles, show us what you got, you know, put on a show for us, it could have been more of a, we are open. We just want to see you for who you are, and all that other stuff will follow. And I was thinking about that this week, because I think we tend to do that sometimes in our lives, too. We tend to approach something from like, you know, we deserve this, we're entitled to this, or, um, you know, we know who you are, and now all, see how all those assumptions go with it. We think we know everything, so, we, so therefore this, and then there come our demands, you know. When we approach things in life from that angle... Kind of like the people in today's story. That's unhealthy, and I don't think anything good comes from that. Versus, imagine if they had approached it from, hey, everybody, let's be open. Yes, we know this is a carpenter, but that doesn't mean he can't offer us some wonderful things. Let's love him. Let's care for him. Let's give him warmth. And let's have a sense of curiosity. Let's hear him out. And let's seek him with a, with a level of hope. That even though we might assume he can't do much because he's a carpenter, we don't know that until we see for ourselves. Let's not put any demands on him. Let's just seek him for who he is. And then all those miracles and all those other things will follow. Rather than demanding the miracle right up front, just seek Jesus for who he is and the rest will follow. And I think that's a lot of what Epiphany is about too. It's about us seeking Jesus for who he is, letting him be who he's going to be, rather than us demanding him to do a certain thing or be a certain way or 
uh, being demanding in our prayers. God, give me this, or God, do that, or why, why aren't you solving this, God? Or, or um, I, know, I know the answer to this, God, but I need you to do it. Rather than just instead saying, let me be open. Let me not be making a bunch of assumptions. Let me not be entering a space from a place of entitlement or arrogance or putting demands on God. Let me just be open. Let me be listening to God. Let me be seeking God with a sense of hope. Let me know all that other stuff that's going to follow. I think it's difficult because in a, in a society that's about instant gratification, we want to be like these people. That's really, if you think about it, that's what they were going through. They were going through the same kind of things we go through. They realized who Jesus was. They were starting to put the pieces together in their minds. Okay, we know him, but we've also heard he can do all these miracles. And then immediately they jump to the instant gratification. All right, well, let's tell them to do it then. Let's see it. Bring on these miracles. We don't want you to just stand here in our synagogue and preach. Do something, you know, show us something. And I think we, we tend to get that way. We tend to want those, that instant gratification, instant answer, um, you know, do this now, do it now. And I think, again, think about you, how you approach any situation. Do you approach it from that demanding sort of instant gratification uh, built on all your assumptions? Or do we approach things, can we approach things with a spirit of openness? and hope, and warmth, and just seeking God for whatever God's will will be. Not what we want it to be, but seeking God for who God will be and what God's will will be. And then know that the good news is all that other stuff will follow. If we're not wanting that instant gratification and placing those demands on God, and we just have a sense of patience and hope and seeking, all that other stuff will follow. But it is difficult, and especially in this day and age, because we're so used to, in society, a lot of things can be had instantly. That, that's one of the, the ways I think that our faith can kind of challenge us against what's going on in society. It's one thing to be able to press the button on the microwave or click the button on the computer or, you know, whatever, you name it. Everything's so fast nowadays. It's different, though, with our faith. We cannot always expect to snap our fingers and God's going to do whatever it is that we want. It doesn't work that way. But if we can have that sense of openness, curiosity, listening, hope, and seeking God and saying, Hey God, I just want to be closer to you, but I want your will to be done. I don't want it to be me placing my demands on you. Then all that other stuff will follow. Unfortunately, sometimes we're too impatient to get to that other place. We're at step A, say, and step A is, I want all this stuff, I want all this stuff. If we would just be patient, step B is, maybe you get, maybe not all that stuff, but you get a lot from God. But you've got to work through the process of getting there with your faith. And I think a lot of that is how we approach. So I want to encourage us all in the Epiphany season, I said this last week too. Think about the identity of Jesus, and then think about your own identity, who am I? And who am I in light of who God is? And how can I draw closer to God? That's what Epiphany is about. It's not just us naming, okay, Jesus had his baptism, and he had the wise men came. Well, the wise men came first, then he had his baptism, then he had his first miracle. It's about naming those things and then saying, why do they matter? They matter because Jesus transforms us in, in a beautiful, deep way that society can never touch. So the good news of our faith carries us through no matter what is happening in the world. And so for us to ask ourselves, how does that impact my daily life? Well, I want to live for God. And I don't want to live for God the way these people did in the story. I want to live for God with a sense of openness and listening and hope and asking for God's will, not my own will. And I want to know that Jesus brings this good news and that he will continue his mission. And we too have to continue our mission. We may have times like he did where we get rejected. But we know that God calls us to continue. Just do the best we can. Take one day at a time. So you think we've only had, let's see, one, two, three, four. This is our fifth week in this epiphany season. 
And we've already seen how much Jesus has journeyed through in his ministry. And we still have uh, next week. I was just reading it this morning. We're going to hear about his, oh, another one of his first miracles. That's what it is. Another one of his first miracles. And other moments in his ministry are going to continue to carry us all the way till we get to Ash Wednesday, to the beginning of the season of Lent. Ask yourself, this is what I always say in confirmation class too, why does any of this matter? That's the, that's the important question. Why does it matter? It matters because as people of faith, we believe, we trust. Maybe that's another thing that where the people had, had some growing to do in the lesson. Maybe, of course, they are people of faith. They're, they're there. They're there in the synagogue. But may, maybe where the growth is, is can we fully trust Maybe they had, they had a good amount of trust, but then they said, well, we got to wait. we got to question this because we know it's Joseph's son. Well, maybe in our lives, we have to give a little bit more of that trust to God instead of letting things in life hold you up. Where you say, well, I trusted God, but this thing happened in my life, so now I'm kind of, I don't know. And I, Nope, keep growing and keep trusting God. It's a little bit more. It's, I know it's not always easy to do, but give that trust to God. To know that God will walk with you no matter what is happening in your life. And so why does it matter? Jesus has come into our lives and loved us deeper, fuller, more richer, more powerful than anything on earth could ever touch. And nothing can take away that good news. And by that good news, we're both saved. <laughs> we're given eternal life. We're given God's grace. And we're given something that walks with us forever. So we have the good news eternally, but we also have the good news now. Because we know we can trust something beyond ourselves. And in a chaotic world, I don't know about you all, but that gets me out of bed every day. To know that I have that eternal gift, but I also have the day-to-day -day gift, which is I can give stuff over to God and trust that God is helping, that God hears me. And it doesn't mean instant gratification, but it means, it's, it's, I always tell people, it's more of a marathon. It's a lifelong journey. It doesn't mean I'm always going to get the answer or the instant gratification today. But it's good news to know that my life has been transformed by something more powerful than anything on this earth. The good news of Jesus Christ. And I can trust in that. I can place my hope there. And so I can get out of bed every day and keep going. And just put one foot in front of the other and take it one step at a time. Do the best you can. And in the meantime of living the life. Respond to that good news. That's the other piece of the why. Why? Because it transforms our lives and then with great joy we want to respond to it. We don't do it out of a sense of, of guilt or a checklist or a to-do list. With great joy we want to respond to the, to the good news that we can trust in a loving God. I can't think of any better news than that than to know that I can trust in a loving God. Now how can I respond to that every day? And I can't answer that for everybody uh, perfectly right at this moment. That's where discernment comes in for all of you. So to be in prayer with God, to be reflecting on these things. Why does it matter? I've been transformed and I want to respond to this good news. Okay, how do I respond to it? That's where you've got to talk to God and discern it. And say, God, what would you have me do that it's your will for me to respond to this good news every day? And God will show you. may not be instantly, but God will show you. And we have to approach it with that openness rather than approaching it with our own demands. So Epiphany is one of my favorite seasons. It's often kind of uh, almost overlooked. But what, what a good piece of news for us to know that we have a whole season to think about identity. Identity is so important in our lives. We do a lot of reflecting on it in confirmation. A lot of their entire year curriculums about identity, actually. But we, as, as the rest of us in church, have a whole season, at least, to think about this. So from now to March 2nd, we're going to continue thinking about it and praying about it and know that God is with us. Place your trust in God. I know it's not easy. I know a lot of people are struggling. It's been a hard, long two years. But keep placing your trust in God and know that God will never leave you. Amen. We know that God will never leave us because we have this amazing grace, which is what we're going to sing now.
So most people know it by heart, or at least you can hum it by heart. If not, you can Google the words real quick. We'll give us a little intro. jokes on there? <laughs> yeah. I usually don't do the jokes when we're virtual just because I feel like it's, I don't know, it's not the same when there's just a couple of us here, but you can certainly see the ones that are in the comments and humor yourselves. <laughs> Jeannie's birthday, because in fact, we were going to sled today, but we said, well, it's your birthday, we need, we need to give you a chance to enjoy, and just relax, and so happy birthday. Okay, let us pray. Dear God, thank you again for this day. Please be with everybody that's named in our comments, and be with the ones that we named here earlier, too. 
We want to draw closer to you, O oh God. We, we proclaim and we name and profess and confess all these things about Jesus' identity in the season of Epiphany. And in the process of that, we want to seek you. We want to draw closer. We want to have a sense of openness and hope. And we want to place our trust in you. We don't want to come at it from a sense of assumptions or entitlement or privilege or arrogance or, or placing demands on you. We want to be open. We want to listen for your voice of guidance. We want your will to be done. It's, it's difficult for us, oh God, because a lot of times the way our society is set up nowadays, it is a lot about the self. And there's a lot about uh, do everything for yourself and, and everything can be done for yourself in an instant gratification kind of way. And don't worry about anybody else, just take care of you. And we know as Christians, we're called to have a bigger view than just the self and to care for our neighbors and our even the stranger that we encounter and to, to love you and seek a closer relationship with you and listen for your calling in our lives of how we can respond every day and be your servants in this world. We need your help to do all of this. So we come to you this morning and we ask for that help. We ask for that guidance that we need to be your servants, to be followers of Jesus and to be his disciples. To look beyond ourselves and to care for others and to do so in your name. So throughout Epiphany and always, give us that guidance and direction every day, O oh God. And be with all the people that are on our hearts. Be with everybody celebrating birthdays. Be with people in nursing facilities. Be with uh, people that have recently lost a loved one. And help us to be there for them as well. Let us all now pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, as, as we forgive our debtors. debtors. It is not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And as far as offering, this would be our normal time for offering. I just, again, want to encourage you, you can give on the website. There's a PayPal link right on the homepage of the website, terrysvillecongregationchurch.org. And or you can always drop it off at our church office or mail it in. Or bring it with you next Sunday if you're here in person. And we do appreciate your support of our church. We, I think, if, I mean, if you're anything like me, if anything, the, the pandemic of these past couple of years has taught me and kind of reminded me or given me a sense of renewal about the importance of church. And especially in those times when we weren't able to do a lot in person, it kind of reminds you of just how valuable it is to be able to do stuff in person. And I think at least in talking to my colleagues, our church did a lot in the past two years to keep things going. You know, there's a lot of, the easier path I think would have just been like, ah, shut everything down and we're not gonna do that much, but we really pushed <laughs> a lot of boundaries and really did everything we could. And of any church I know, we, we were not in person the least amount of time of anybody I know at least. So I'm very proud of that and thankful for it. So. It, it reminded me of the importance of church. I hope it did for you too. And, the, and with that reminder in our hearts of how important it is, is also the reminder to support it. Because we won't be here if we don't, if we don't support it. So I want to encourage you to do that. Like I said before, we have the annual meeting coming up the third Sunday in February. So that's, was that three, three weeks from today or four? One, two, be four. Yeah, four weeks from today. And then the snow date for the annual meeting is that following Sunday. So thank you for your generosity. And we're going to close. I'll say a little prayer and then we're going to close by singing. They will know we are Christians by our love. So going back to what I was saying earlier, how do we respond to God's good news? How has it transformed our lives? What does it mean? Well, it means we have to show love. And, and sometimes you can be preachy in your faith. And sometimes you can just do it by showing love with your actions. So whether you're using your, your words or your actions or your thoughts or your prayers or all the above, you live your life in a way that responds to God's good news. That's why I love this song because it reminds us of that. So let's say a little prayer first. Dear God, thank you for the offering. 
Please bless it and multiply it. Help us every day to respond to your good news in our lives. As we think about the identity of Jesus and our own identities in this season of Epiphany, we ask, what does it mean? Why does it matter? What's the point? The point is, you love us and you've given us the gift of eternal life through your Son. And we also have that good news while we're on earth in the sense that we can place our lives in your hands. And we can respond to your good news every day by living our lives for you. So help us to do that. Show us how best to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. They will know we are Christians by our love. Like I said, he did fall. Yeah, it's very slippery out there. It's like, for some reason, it's slicker than like other areas, especially once you take this level. Really cold. Ah, 
die. <laughs> Don't fall. Don't fall. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Blessings, everyone. Enjoy today. Stay warm and God be with you. Amen.